The Prophet said also, al fidda to bil fidda, riban illa haan wa haan. Haan means here, here. Now, what's the illa? There's no description. This hukum, which is that it's riba, we have the hukum. Do we have the hukum? It's riba. But do we have a description for them? A wasf. The mujtahid is now going to come. And he's going to look at all of those which have been mentioned. And he will say that the illa for all of them is that they are money. Thamaniyan. The currency. Money. They're all the same. This is called takhidul manat. He brought it out. He extracted it from all of that which the Prophet said, what they all have in common. And he said that this is. That is called what? It is called takhidul manat. And as I said before, al hukmu yaduru ma illati wujudan wa adaman. Very good. And these spoke issues are spoken about elsewhere in more details. That was just a touch on. وكل شرط لازم للعاقد في البيع والنكاح والمقاصد إلا شروط حللت محرما أو عكسه فباطلات فعلماء. This قاعدة the Sheikh رحمه الله تعالى he is talking about the issue of condition. We spoke about before issue pertaining to conditions and the موانع and what not. Any condition that are in buyu in in ibadat or in muamalat. Pay attention. B books of fiqh are divided into two. Ibadat, which is the first type, which is worship, and mu'amalat, which are transactions. Any condition a person goes into, he has to, any conditions, it becomes lazim. It becomes necessary for the other party to stick to that part. He has to. And there is no difference between if it's ibadah or if it's a mu'amala. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Because Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu awfu bil'ukut. The Prophet said, Al mu'minun ala shurutihim. The believers are of their condition. So the other party cannot just say, Oh, I just want to change my mind. I'm out of the idea. You have to stick by it. You have to what? Stick by it. Tirmidhi narrated in the hadith is Hasanun Sahih. Good. Here we have to understand something which is. The, the conditions that enter transactions, they're very important. Many people don't know. They go into contracts with people. They sign contracts. And they don't know what is condition. Are you with me? And what is a condition that is correct and is permissible and a condition which is facet, it is nullified, it has no basis. What is the difference between the two? First of all, let's remember this, that the conditions in the transactions, there are six types. Six types only. And I'm going to simplify them. Four of them are correct and two of them are void. Null and void. And six and four of them are what? Correct. The first condition, first type is what? Shart ma huwa min muqtab al aqd. A condition that is from the essence of the transaction. It's from the essence. Brothers, pay attention to this. It's a shart, it's a condition. And that condition is what? It is from the essence of the of the of the transaction. What do you mean by that? For example, I condition to you, Akhi, I buy this car from you and I'll take it right now. That condition was already part of the transaction. It's part of the uh, transaction. He had to give you your, your vehicle, the car that you bought from him anyways. Unless he conditions to keep the car, which we're going to speak about later, but it's known for how long he wants to keep it for. Because if he doesn't tell us the time, it falls under Bay'ul Thunayya. Bay'ul Thunayya falls under, and it's Muharram. Which is just to keep somebody's stuff. Say, Akhi, you know, buy the car from me, and I'll keep it. So ambiguous, I'll keep it. What do you mean, I'll keep it? That Bay' is void, null and void. That's one. The second type is called Shartun Ma Huwa Min Maslahat al -Aqd. So the first one, before I go, the first one, I have to give another example because it's good. Uh, <coughs> the Asian community, they have this thing which is, they marry a daughter, what? To their uh, man, but they don't give her the white girl. They'll keep the girl for a while. And they give her later the girl. If he conditions, and he says, in the contract of the marriage, he says, I'll take my wife with me tonight. She's mine. Huh? This shart, 
has to be fulfilled, even that though it's part of what? Even that it's min muqtad al-aqd. It's part of the contract anyways. And they had to do it regardless. They had to do it anyways. But he's conditioning it right now is what? Ziyada to ta'kidin. He says, emphasis on how... Number two. Shartu ma huwa min maslahat al-aqd. It's a condition that is from the... It's not part of the transaction. But the second time. It's a condition that is not from the essence of the transaction, but it's from the benefits that are attached to the transaction. A benefit. Um, for example, if a person says to you, um, okay, I'll buy this car, I'll sell this car to you, but you're going to give me all the money now. This is a benefit from the, for the other person. He said, I don't want installments, I want you to give me the money now. Right now. Or he conditions, and what does he say? I want a contract for this car. Huh? That is all Sahih. Number three is a condition which has a benefit from one of the people who's doing the transaction. كأن يشتري الإنسان أن يسكن في بيت الذي باعه لمدة أسبوع. He says, أخي, I will live in the house for a week, or I'll drive the car for a week, and then you, I'll give it to you. So he buys the car from him, but he says, I will use that car for that week. You allow me to benefit from your car for a week before I pass it over to you. Okay, no problem, no problem, good. Okay, is that permissible? The scholars they disputed each other on this issue. The Hanafiya and the Shafi'iya they took the view that it's not permissible, and they used a lot of uh, they used a lot of what evidences. One of the evidences they used was that the Prophet ﷺ, he said لا يحل شرط وبيعن that it is not permissible what a a a, 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 a uh, transaction and a condition are both not permissible. Nah. So they narrate they said that. This hadith, uh, Abu Ya'la, he narrated it in his Musnadul Kabir. Some of you might wonder and say to yourselves, but Musnadul Kabir, does Abu Ya'la have a Musnadul Kabir? Naam, he has two Musnads. He has a small one and he has a big one. Naam. The one that we have published today is Musnadul Sagheer. We don't have the Musnadul Kabir. We don't have it. So how did you narrate this one? We, it's through the wasita of Ibn Hajar in his book, al matalib Al-Aliyah. He mentions that. And Ibn Hajar considered this hadith, la yahillu shartun wa bay'un, when he brought it in his book, al matalib Al-Aliyah, he ruled this hadith to be weak, because of the chain of narration is disconnected. So if the hadith is weak, the arguments of the Hanafiya and the Shafi'iyya in this regard, so we say to them, إِنْ كَانَ الْحَدِيثُ ضَعِيفًا فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُعَوَّلُ عَلَيْهِ If the hadith is weak, we don't give it consideration. The second evidence is that they brought is the hadith of Aisha, which is in Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim. That the messenger said, كُلُّ شَرْطٍ لَيْسَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ بَاطِلٌ وَإِنْ كَانَ مِئَةُ شَرْطٍ Any condition which is not in the book of Allah, it is batil, it is void, null and voided. Even if it's a hundred conditions. So they said, that's our evidence. The second view, the scholars, the second view, who have the second view, they said, um, that condition is correct. If a person sells you a car and says to you, I'm going to use your car for a month or a week, it's allowed. <coughs> it's allowed for him to say that. 
And they said, so they, the hadith of, uh, the hadith that you guys narrated from Abu Ya'la in his Muslim, it's weak. So you can't, in kana al-hadith al-da'ifan ha, fala yu'aw, fa inna la yu'awwalu alayhi. We don't need to look into it. Uh, any rulings that you have built on this weak hadith is baseless now. But the question that arises is, uh, what about the hadith of Aisha that we brought? So this hadith, I realize so many people quote it, and they don't even understand what, he, what he's meant by it. كُلُّ شَرْطٍ لَيْسَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَوَا بَاطِلُ وَإِنْ كَانَ مِئَةُ شَرْطٍ They don't understand it. So let's analyze what I said. The shart that is batil is the shart that goes against the kitab and sunnah. Any condition which opposes the sharia, the kitab and the sunnah. Or a shart, a condition that goes against the muqtawa al-aqd, the essence of the transaction. For example, a woman says to a man, um, you can marry me. Hey, and you can't have any intimacy with me. That's shartun batilun. Because it goes against the essence of what? This uh, transaction, which is what? The marriage, nikah. It goes against the muqtad al aqd. It goes against the essence of the marriage. This shart is batil now. Are you with me? This shart is what? Batil. But a woman conditions, huh? she's conditions when you get married to me. You have to take me <coughs> back to my parents in the country they are at. You're going to marry me, but not in this country. You're going to take me to that country. This shart is in the book of Allah. You're going to find it anyway in the ayah in the Quran. Does it go against the muqtad al-aqd? That it opposes the kitab and the sunnah? This shart, she's allowed to do it. And you can't say, كل شرط ليس في كتاب الله فوا باطل وإن كان مئة شرط. Ah, good. Good. <coughs> the fourth point, the fourth type. I said six, right? The fourth type. The fourth type of what? I only mentioned three, right? And I mentioned the third one, which would dispute occurred. So, um, so before I go into the fourth type, the, that, those scholars who said that, that that type of transaction is not allowed, two evidences they've been refuted on. First of all, the Prophet and Jabir ibn Abdullah. Jabir sold his camel to the Prophet. When his camel couldn't move, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi came and the Prophet hit his camel from the back or his riding beast. And when the Prophet hit the camel from the back, the camel started to run because it was very slow, it couldn't walk properly. The Prophet came and he hit it from the back and the camel ran. And it was from the, the blessings of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the camel ran, Jabir said it ran in a way that it never ran before. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Jabir and said, you're going to sell it to me. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Jabir said to him, no. And that shows you that the Sahabas, when it came to business, they could say yes or no to the Prophet. It's their stuff, it's their property. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, one dirham. And Jabir and the Prophet, discuss, they discussed the amount until they finally agreed on how much it's going to be. Jabir then looked at the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, but you let me keep it until we go to Medina because my property is on it. Until we reach Medina. He conditioned that he's riding beast. The stuff that are on it are not taken from it. And that it goes to Medina. So when it got to Medina, Jabir came to the Prophet and he gave him the camel. The Prophet smiled. And what did the Prophet do? He said, Ya Jabir, I don't want your camel. And keep the money. The Prophet only wanted to give him money, uh, but not in a way he felt shy. Also the Prophet said, the Hadith, Nahan Nabi Yu. The Prophet prohibited Anu Thurayya. The Prophet prohibited the Bay'u Thurayya. Bay'u Thurayya, we said, is what? It is a b transaction where the person, he conditions. For example, he says to a brother, Akhi, I'm going to sell you my car, but I'm going to keep it. This is called Bay'u Thurayya. Why is it called Thurayya? You haven't mentioned how long you're going to keep the car for. When to when? Narrow it down. Because the hadith says, Unless it's known. So if the condition that the person stipulates on the transaction is known, it's permissible. So the, the, the Hanafiya and the Shafi'iya are refuted from that angle. And that is the view that Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah strengthened, Imam Ibn Al Qayyim strengthened, Ahmed Ibn Hanbal strengthened. Very good.
There's a third view in this issue before I move on to the fourth point. There's a third view regarding can a person, can a person stipulate a, a condition on a transaction uh, and is a benefit for him. Only one, per one party p uh, benefits from that. The Hanaf and the Shafi'i, they said no. The second view, they said yes, it is permissible and they brought their evidences. And that is the view of Sheikh al ibn Qayyim and Ibn Imam Ahmed. There's a third view. The third view, they said it is permissible to have one condition stipulated. But they said it's not permissible to be more than one. Anything that goes above one condition, ah, then that is not permissible. And that's the madhab of Hanabila, the madhab of the Hanabila. And they use the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, لا شرطان في بيعن, That there's no two conditions cannot be stipulated on a transaction. That hadith is sound, without a doubt. It's Hassan. The hadith is what? It is a sound hadith. The scholars, they said, what they previously said to the group before. They said that the shart that is prohibited here is any shart that goes against the nusus al the kitab and the sunnah. Good. And it's also what goes against what? It is also what goes against the muqtad al-aqd, the essence of the transaction. Good. And they also refuted them by saying to them, well, do you not see that you're contradicting yourselves? That if you've permitted one, one then why have you said no to two? Isn't one condition is what isn't one condition itself uh, a condition is it not a condition then if it becomes two it's still a condition now so the scholars they said to permit it in a little amount and to say it's wrong in a lot it's wrong number four number four which is the fourth type of shart in mu'amalat it is الشرط الذي يحصل به تعليق العقد. It is um, conditioning. A, 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 this is a shart. It's a condition in which the person he he stipulates towards this transaction the happiness or the acceptance of another person. He says, for example, I will sell this product to you if my friend Zaid is pleased with it, or if Zaid comes. The jumhur of the ulama are of the view that, that 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 is permissible. It is permissible. Sorry, the jumhur of the ulama, sorry, the majority of the scholars are of the view that it's not sahih. And the reason why they say it's not sahih is because there is not a, a jazm. He is not saying it with conviction. He is iffy about it. And they said that the uqud, the transaction that takes place between two parties, it has to be done with what? It has to be done with uh, jazm. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah took that view. Ibn Qayyim took that view. And it's a riwayah from Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And those who took that argument with them. Very good. The fifth type is what? اشتراط عقد في عقد كأن يقولا It is conditioning a transaction in another transaction, two transactions in one, basically. What is that? What, what, what does that mean? It means um, a person says to a person, I will rent this house to you for a hundred pounds. Hundred pounds per month, for example, or five hundred pounds a month. You can stay in my house. Ah, uh, I'll rent it to you. But with the condition that you sell your car to me. That is a aqd. So the, the renting is a aqd. It's a condition with transaction. And then there's another transaction that you're doing with him, which is what? His car again. This one, this is shart, which is batil. This is shart, which is? The Messenger of prohibited that. Naha an bay'atayni fi bay'ah. Sheikh Al Albani he added one other one other form into this, which scholars disputed amongst themselves. Sheikh Salah Al Fawzan he adds it into the surah. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin I think he adds it to it in Sharh Al Mumti. I think I'm not sure, which is um, it is called uh, it's a it's a it's, it's some it's, it's somebody will say to you, Akhi, this watch costs this much now and it costs this much later. If you buy it now in cash, this is how much it costs. And if you buy it over five years in installments, 
there's an additional 200 pounds on it. Why? Um, there is what? So now it costs how much? 500 pounds. This watch costs for how much now? 500 pounds. Give me cash right now and take it, it's for 500. You can't take it right now, you want to take it? Okay, 700 pounds. Give me every month 20 pounds. That Sheikh Nasir said it falls under this hadith. And the strongest is that it's permissible, that type of transaction. And it's not prohibition of bay'atayni fi bay'atin wahida. It's not. It doesn't fall under that. And inshallah ta'ala, when we come to the kutub of, uh, when we come to umdatul ahkam that we're doing, we'll explain it there inshallah ta'ala. And o kitab wa awa kitab durarul bahiyya fi masail al fiqhiyya. The sixth type is called what? Ishtiratu amrin yunaqid al aqda. The sixth one is what? The sixth type is what? Conditioning a matter which goes against what? It goes against the transaction. It goes against the what? It nullifies it rather. It nullifies it in totality. For example, I will sell this car to you and I will not give it to you. I will sell you this car, but I will never give it to you. Naam, that is shartun batil. Shart which is batil. What about if you agreed a person with if you agreed a with a person in this? If you already made that uh, condition, um, does it affect your transaction? You've already done it with the person. You agree to it. Will it harm your transaction? No, it won't. If you've already made the transaction with the person, the transaction will not be harmed, and the, the, that stuff is yours. That stuff is what? It's yours, and the condition is false. It doesn't have no basis. And the evidence for that is the issue of Barira, when Aisha took her as a slave. Barira was a mukatab. Barira was a slave. And as, as I said, the slave are types. Slave which is kulli. It's all of it, he's a slave. There's another slave who's called Muba'ab, partially slave. One, he had two owners. One owner freed him, and the other owner is holding on to him. The scholars, they said, you shouldn't, shouldn't keep a slave. Once a person lets go, and he's freed for the sake of Allah. Are you with me? He's partially free. For the sake of Allah, he's been freed. Then you shouldn't. It's like you're doing shirk with Allah. Part is owned by Allah. He's freed for Allah and the other part is you. And you're both owning one thing together. It's better you let the person go. That is muba'ab. The third, the other type is called mukatab. He's a slave who the master has given him the agreement that he can go and free himself. Let's go free yourself. Make money. Get that money. And now you're free. So he's out there making money. He's called a mukatab. Barira, she was a mukatab. Her master said, you're free the minute you bring me money. Barira came to Aisha and said, Aisha, I have been, I'm a mukatab basically, and my master wants money. Can you help me with the money? Aisha said, Aisha said, I will buy you all of you. What I will do is what? I will go to the master, I will buy you fully from your master. Good. And, um, of course, you're free. You're a free woman after they let you go. And your wala comes to my me. I have wala, you and I inherit you when you die. Marina went back to her master. She told him her master the situation. They said, nope. Tell Aisha to pay for you and buy you. And the wala is in our hand. The Prophet said, Aisha asked, Aisha said, the Prophet said to Aisha, don't worry what they said. Just buy, give them the money, Barira, and the wala won't go to them, it'll go to you, because you're the one who freed her. You're the one who freed her. She's your, the wala is to you. Naam? So whether they say it with their mouths or not, la'i'tibar Allah, it has no weight based on the hadith.